Guys, tonight we are talking about everything Dynasty Startup. Trading during them, navigating around one, prepping for one. But Scott, first question for you is, what is the biggest mistake you see people making in startups? Biggest mistake I think people make in startups is they don't have a plan. They have a list of players they want to try to get. Then they try to squeeze their strategy into... I need to get these players. And that usually leads to bad process, bad roster construction, uh, misuse of assets in terms of, oh man, I really, really wanted to get Garrett Wilson in this league. So I'm going to end up trading my future first to move up two to three rounds so I can draft Garrett Wilson. And then you kind of look at it, your team at the end and you go, yeah, I don't love my roster construction. I don't have the liquidity or the flexibility that I want. I just chased players. And I think that's the opposite. If you listen to us, why we wouldn't chase players. And frankly, that's why I play in a lot of leagues because I do have favorite players. I have favorite teams, uh, but I've started to separate myself from that wholeheartedly in dynasty because it just doesn't make sense. There's a lot of stuff we can't account for. You may have an opinion on a player. Shane and I argue over players all the time. We get questions on this player or that player constantly, but the reality is how often are we typically right? at best 55% of the time, 60% okay. of the time. 78. I put that poll out yeah. on Twitter. I don't know if anybody saw it, but I put the poll out on Twitter. Are you better than your league mates at picking players? And more than 60% of the people said yes. Now, I didn't vote because it was my poll, but I probably would have voted no because honestly, a lot of player decisions are completely agnostic. I'm trying to bet on the situation, the offense, but like from a pure player evaluation standpoint, there's a lot that goes into that and it doesn't always translate to fantasy. So I think that's the biggest right. mistake in startups. You're not flexible. You don't have a strategy. You're chasing players. Even if you have a portfolio, you may, oh, I don't have a lot of Kyle Pitts share. So I got to really get him in this startup. But then what if this startup isn't the place to get him because of where your draft slot was, what the cost is on the clock. So you got to be flexible. Even if you can't do the, to elite quarterback strategy, or you can't trade back to get future firsts. Like you have to have a plan where you can adapt and not be stuck on players. And a lot of times it's just players, players, players. Shane, what are your thoughts on that, buddy? I say one of the biggest thing is being forced to um, enter an auction um, startup draft because your co-host is uh, an evil person. Um, and we'll play in um, snake drafts with you. Um, so that's one. But two, I was going to actually say, I think it's uh, partly being too inflexible. Um, a lot of times people, you know, they go in with a plan and they that's all they'll do is they'll stick to that plan and nothing else. So kind of like Scott was saying, they're like, well, I got to get Kyle Pitts here. Um, or outside of the two elite quarterback thing, which is always a good idea, they want to plan out the next four rounds. They're like, well, I should go quarterback, quarterback here. And then we think wide receiver, wide receiver, running back. And I'm like, I don't even know who's going to be on the board. Like, I have literally no idea what right. who's going to be there in the fourth round. I don't know. You shouldn't even know if you're going to have a fourth round pick going in. The, you know what I mean? Like, you, you should be looking to move around. So that, that's one of my things. Um, I'd say not knowing the format because I'm guilty of that a lot. Um, <clears throat> but I, I do like to at least peek at it and have a rough semblance of an idea of it. But I'm also in a thousand leagues. So it's a little... <laughs> I have no idea what our format is right now for a dynasty trade <clears throat> five hammer league. Yeah. Yeah. We just sent out the invites for the uh, dynasty trades and five hammer listener league or hammers. The other two uh, leagues are going to be sent out soon, but um, yeah. So that's, so that's a question I have too, is when you're in a startup, well, I guess here I'll add in this first, what I think is the biggest mistake that people make that I see all the time is they make a good move by trading back right? And acquiring these assets, they may have even gotten an extra asset, but then they're so jealous that they're not making picks that they spend a ton to move back up. You look at the player they take, it's a flat tier. And then you look at the net and it's like, what, what were you doing moving, moving back up? So just being, being a little restless and not just letting the draft come to them. Okay. So we got that question. Let's address the crowd. We have 136 people in here, but we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have 400 tonight. I think. Hopefully, it's our Tuesday crew. We love you all. Um, let's go to this question right here. So, if you're outside the top 10 and can't trade up for a QB, is there another strategy or build you're looking for, or load up on backups and hope to secure spot starts? Well. 
I'll take this real quick because I think we're going to be putting out some more content on this exact debate. However, it's a common question. What if I can't get the elite quarterbacks? I can't trade up, and I got essentially double screwed because I got the 111 pick in the startup. And so I either am, I mean, God love your league if they've taken Anthony Richardson at the 110 and it just goes 10 straight quarterbacks. They, at that point, the gods have literally spoken for your league. It's just not meant for you to get an elite quarterback <laughs> probably. So that is the sign to pivot to another way of building. And I think you almost have to look at the room and say, okay, I'm not going to be able to crack or dent this room with my preferred strategy, A, because of where I got dealt in the snake draft. Unlucky. Uh, but B, there's probably a lot of people that have tried that strategy already. Like, there's been nobody willing to trade out of those spots either. You know, barring someone wasn't able to trade up. Like, you couldn't trade up, but nobody else could. So it just went 10 straight quarterbacks. Automatically, you're reading the room saying, okay, what is the best way to roster construct a different way. You're probably not taking that 11th quarterback because you know you're just chasing everybody else that already did it. So you literally have to be looking at this through the scope of, okay, I need to address quarterback at some point, but what is my best path to get there? And I think to your last point, Clay, on the biggest mistake, people have a plan. They trade back. They accrue value. They build differently than the room, but then they get panicked and they go, man, I'm not to my optimal roster construction or I'm not contending. And then you see the same people that had that great process within a year, they've blown all their extra assets or they've lost all the advantage they got by zigging or zagging. And then they're just out. They have an average team. So I think you really have to lean into it. That's why you try multiple leagues. You try picking from different slots. You try different formats. Uh, but I think you just go the opposite way. You're probably taking Jefferson or Chase. Or you're taking a running back and saying, I'm building around B. John Robinson. Uh, shout out to Jamie Eisenberg of CBS. I don't know if anybody heard his uh, bold take for this year, but uh, B. John Robinson will outscore Eric Dickerson as a rookie, which was 440 touches, 2,200 yards, and 20 touchdowns. So he believes there's Ooh. big numbers in store for uh, B. John. I don't buy that, but you get the point. You could bet on that. Build around a running back, build around Jefferson or Chase or whatever, and build differently, but stick with it. You know, Don't I mean, be I, so depressed, man. I didn't get those quarterbacks. I, you just got to focus on building a different way. Yeah, we don't we don't want to be reaching for Dak Prescott and Kirk Cousins being like, hey, I went quarterback, quarterback. I double tapped. I went at 112 and 201. What do you think? My quarterbacks are set. And you're like, yeah, but your quarterbacks are kind of mediocre, bro. Like, I don't know. And that's like marrying like an ugly chick. Like, yeah, you're married and that's cool and all but you don't want to look at her. You know what I mean? And that's how I would feel about having Kirk Cousins and Dak Prescott as my quarterbacks. Like, no, I'm good. Like I would definitely try to cheat on them. So I'm fine with starting to build. And yeah, we did talk about this in the episode that's going to be coming out. So I don't want to belabor the point, but I'm okay with going a little bit. Dickerson was kind of good. Yes, he was. I'm okay with going um, another route because also it's fun. To, not fun. I shouldn't say fun. It's good to take risk and build your team a little bit differently than everyone else. If you can't get the two elite QBs, don't <clears throat> just get two QBs because they're QBs. It's just not good. Not good. Not great, Bob. Here, let's go to Alyssa. She's got a question for us. So it's a 12-team, one QB start eight. Give Brees Hall... Get the 103, 209, 24 first, 24 second, Pacheco, and Gabe Davis. I'm a strong contender, maybe even the favorite. I also have CMC and Pollard at running back. One QB start eight. I'm just I'm just holding Brees. Nah, man. Look, I don't 24 first. I, I don't know. What is it? The 101? Marvin Harrison? If you can guarantee me that it's Marvin Harrison Jr., sure but you can't and it won't be. So no, I'm not doing this. And I told you this on uh, Alyssa. I told you, um, I told you this on the, in the YouTube, uh, one of the, where you, wherever you asked this, I said, no, don't do this. This is bad. Very bad. Get Scott. You tell her it's bad too. Yeah. I mean, I think she probably knows the answer too. I mean, I'm a strong contender, maybe even the favorite you're essentially trading a dollar for three quarters, a dime, a couple nickels, Yep. You know, it's, it looks good, man. That package looks awesome until you realize you can only start eight pieces. Right. And every one of those you just traded for minus the 103, you're probably going, hmm, what do I do with Gabe Davis? What do I do with the 209? What do I do with that second next year? How about that late first next year? Like all of those, now they're your problem. Yeah, yeah. 
already contender. Roll with the uh, Pollard, CMC, Brees Hall. Smash everybody with those hammer running backs. Yeah. Now again, if this is a ten team league, or excuse me, start ten league, we could start to talk about it. You know what I mean? Two first for a running back. Like, all right, one of them's a one one oh three. If it's super flex, well then we're getting really kinky. And yeah, I'll probably take that. But in this, it's as simple as just get the single best asset. Just pretty much all the time. Like yep. 70% of the time <laughs> when you have trade offer and you're looking in a start eight, you know, who's the best one? Yeah, I'm taking this one. It, just some quick advice for Alyssa too. Uh, the person that offered you this deal, uh, go to them and offer like your five pieces that are outside of your top 12 and see if you can get their best player because they're exactly. probably going to laugh or get mad. But listen, they sent you a five for one deal. Send them back a five for one deal. See if they yeah. it just that's putting them to the test. Do they understand the fact that it is a start eight? And if they decline and they say, why would I ever give up the best player in a trade like this? There you go. You're right back to square one. But test them out. Test them out for sure. OK, so I guess we should also mention the the two golden rules that we always bring up when we're talking about startups. So the first one being that if you make a trade, you want to make sure you're getting the same amount of assets in return. So if you give up, let's just say a second and third, you want to make sure you get back. <laughs> that's such a bad example. Make sure you get back the same number of picks on the uh, on the side. So that's the first rule that I said in a clunky fashion. Second rule is don't trade your 24 first away. Instead, back try to uh, trade back and collect them if anything. Okay, so let's go to another question here. First off, what sources do you guys use for startup ADP? And what other sources do you recommend checking out for startup content? Besides Dynasty Trades and Five, of course. Uh, I, don't, I don't understand. Honestly, I have, I, I have access to different sources. Like I think everyone has access to Keep Trade Cut. I have the Deco's ADP on Bulletproof. Like there's probably five or six different sources. To be frank, like, and this isn't bragging, I really don't use it only because when I go into a startup, I probably have the idea of how I want to roster construct. And since I'm already pretty agnostic when it comes to players, especially outside of like the elite tiers of players, I'm, I'm probably not really caring if the wide receiver 25 or the wide receiver 35 is going in this range. I'm probably looking at it as a placeholder on my roster. If I'm in a snake, I'm going to be subject to what's on the board. So a lot of times those players, according to the ADP, what does that really mean? I mean, look, look no further than like keep trade cuts, start up ADP, and you'll see players that are valued in a certain order. And you're going like, that really makes no sense. In fact, you'll probably find places in the ADP where you'd go, that's wide receiver 25, that's wide receiver 35. Most of my teams, I would never trade 25 for 35. Why are they like that? Because I think the startup mindset is brand new league. I don't want to draft the old players. I don't have a plan because it's not a real league, right? It's just a mock draft or rankings, or your rankings yeah. exercise. So give me the young, 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 young. Until you get to like a real league with real players and you're trying to win, you're trying to contend, whatever it might be then those decisions get a lot easier than just whatever the ADP is. So just keep that in perspective. Don't follow it. Don't feel like, oh, man, I got great value or, oh, I reached here, Clay. I reached. That's a fifth-round startup pick I took at the middle of the fourth. You reached. You just destroyed your team. You really didn't as long as you have a plan for your roster construction. Yeah, I was going to say I would stay away from any mock draft uh, ADP. Um, so if anyone from DLF is watching. Apologies. Um, I'm in, in, one of, in one of the DLF mock drafts. But even now, right, I, I'm, I, I never know how to play them. I'm in like the 10th round and I'm looking at who's available on the board. And I'm like, and it's a one quarterback mock draft. And I'm like, yeah, but I still like CJ Stroud better than any of these <laughs> other yokels that are on the board. So I'm going to draft uh, CJ Stroud. Now, in the real world, would I do that? No, because I already drafted Lamar Jackson in the fourth round. What good would CJ Stroud do me there? I wouldn't do that in the real world. But it's a mock draft. I don't have any consequences, mm -hmm. you know, um, anywhere I can get live ADP is fine. But like Scott said, I don't live and die by ADP. ADP is just a rough guideline. And that's more of an idea of lets me know what other people think of players um, and where they're wrong and where I can take advantage of them. So talk to me about flat tiers, finding flat tiers in a startup and how to navigate around them. Scott, you go first. 
Well, I mean, inherently, we already know where the flat tiers generally exist. If you've listened to any of the roster construction stuff I've done, if you've just, you don't even need to dive down the warp tool path, right? Just start looking at historical fantasy points per game. It's just that simple. You can put it on a line graph and see where it flattens out. Now, the line graph or even the warp tool doesn't help you with who the players are going to be next year or the year after, but it gives you an idea of like, okay, if I'm in a startup and I'm picking between wide receiver 20 and 40, generally I know that it's pretty flat. So in my head, I should be sitting there thinking, it doesn't really matter who I get in that range, at least player to player. I have to have a plan for that player. Is that just a receiver that I need because I need to start three and I can start four more in the flex? Is that a receiver I really like in that range? Because guess what? I think that player has a chance to be sold for even more because of something about the market that they like. Then there's other decisions you make that are the opposite. I'm picking in a flat tier. I know this player is stuck in the flat tier. Tyler Lockett, he goes at wide receiver 44 in a startup. He's stuck in the flat tier, no matter what. The purpose for why you would pick him versus why you would pick Elijah Moore, even if they're within like a round of each other, is totally different. So just acknowledge why you're picking the player. It doesn't matter who you take over who. Just acknowledge why you're doing it and put that into perspective because this is the only time where you get to control the trajectory of your team. I think that's the biggest thing. In the flat tiers, we know where they are. Wide receiver twos through fives, running back twos, every damn tight end outside the top four or five, quarterback 18 to 30 historically is all the same. The only difference is I like QB 22 because it's somebody that maybe has a higher value upside or could lose their job further down the road than this guy. But production-wise, right. it's pretty flat. So I think we kind of already know that. You know where it flattens off. You know if someone offers you a trade in an existing league. Hey, Clay, do you want to trade me? How about I trade you Josh Palmer for Tyler Boyd in the third? Which side would you take? Give your me your brain immediately third. goes, just give me the third. I don't think the, the, the receivers. Third. Right, the receivers in that trade, I can live with not getting to pick the one I like more the free asset is essentially what I'm chasing there. And a lot of our dynasty decisions should be looking at stuff like that. Let's do this. Scott, can you help me out with the, with the overlay? I want to share my screen. I've got a startup board right here that I'm in the middle of. Let's just take a peek at the, at the board and, and spot some flat tiers and just look at how this is going so far. So let me share my screen. Um, let's see if I can figure out how to do it. There we go. All right, are we good to go? Can you see my screen? Okay. Yes, we are. So I am Mr. Baby there in the uh, in the four spot, and this is the uh, this is the team that we talked about the other day where I was getting getting hosed for taking Travis Kelsey in the second. But just take a peek at just take a peek at this board. First off, how the how the first round went? It went Mahomes, Hurts, Allen, Jackson. That's who I took in the four spot because it's a four point per passing touchdown league. Um, I should say too, it's a twelve team start ten PPR. So I went Jackson at four, Burrow went five, Herbert at six, Jefferson went at seven, T Law at eight, Fields at nine, Chase at ten. CD Lamb at 11 and Deshaun Watson at 112. So it was kind of um kind of an interesting first round. Three three positional players going in the top 12. What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, I think you can probably look at this. This now keep in mind for the listeners, this was the league where Clay was unable to trade, correct? Right. So there was no let me move up, let me move back. It was right. a bit basically you had to roster construct and pick based on what was on the board. There was no maneuvering around. I mean, is there no trading in the league at all? Or was it all no, just there's, no there's trading, trading in the startup? Okay. Just just okay. no none in the startup because apparently there's a couple of newbies um who who are joining this league. And that's part of the reason why I was like, I'll join it too. See if I can see if I can make some money I, on this one. It is a little uh, I'm curious on Shane's thoughts on the team fantasy dust because they leaned into the let's zig when everyone else is zagging, right? They took Jefferson before Lawrence Fields and Watson. But then they didn't reach at quarterback, and they just figured, you know what? I'm going to dare everybody else in the league to keep taking quarterbacks even when they don't need them. And because there was no trading, I'm guessing at some point the people that already had two QBs were like, I have to fill out my team. 
I'm going to let Kirk Cousins fall. I'm going to let Aaron Rodgers fall. You know, like I don't love that start until I realized somebody took Tua in round three and someone else got Kirk Cousins in round six. Yeah. See that, right. I mean, fantasy dust head actually played that beautifully. Like he just, he mm. didn't panic, didn't panic at all. It was just nah, position, 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 position. You guys want to take Kirk Cousins and have him as your third quarterback, go for it. Um, and then they just steal Aaron Rodgers. And well, I don't know what round that is. 37. What round is that? Eight. <laughs> yeah, round 37. yeah. I'm not very good at seeing. Um, and then he added Matt Stafford. Who else does he have? I'm guessing there was another 15 rounds or so to this, right? Yeah, yeah. There's there's a ton more here. I can I can scroll down. Uh, okay. But no, yeah, I do like what he did. To end up with Jeff, Jefferson and Brees Hall is a beautiful start, man. Like, and if you're going to build a team that's sagging, that's the way to do it. Like, you don't half-ass it. Like, he he got the wide receiver two in fantasy and the running back one in fantasy. That's not bad. So tell me what you think about my team. So this is a PPR. It's a 1.5 tight end premium. So I went Lamar Jackson at 104 at 209. I did take Kelsey because I was going for the positional advantage. And then we talked on the stream last time, last Tuesday, I took Mark Andrews on the, uh, on the clock during the stream to go ahead and stack with Lamar. Daniel Jones did come back around. I was able to get him in the fourth Najee Harris. I was like, all right, let's just try to try to win now. We don't like Najee Harris, but 504. Do you think that was decent uh, value, guys? I, I, not, would, uh, I would not say I dislike Najee Harris. I actually like be an RB1. He's volume, volume RB1 this year if he stays healthy. Um, so Najee, then it went Goddard at what is that, the 609? It's again, I mean, it's only a 1.5 for tight ends, but look at who went around there. Like, what do you guys think about this? Godwin went. Uh, Javante Williams, Pickens, Traylon Burks. What? Oh, yeah, Shane doesn't like some of those picks. I, I I'll yeah. say this. I do think the one thing that you executed pretty well was you did. And I don't think we talk about this enough as a defensive strategy. There's a idea of defensive drafting in a draft like this. This was 1.5 premium, correct? Mm-hmm. 1.5, no trading. It, you essentially... You doubled down on taking Andrews. If I would have known you were going to get Andrews, I would have not taken Travis Kelsey. I would have taken like, you know, Garrett Wilson or Jalen Waddle or whatever receiver, probably Garrett Wilson. I would have taken him and then taken Mark Andrews coming back around. But one thing you did do that was smart that sticks out to me, like just looking at this board, not knowing, you know, what was the conversation during this draft. One thing that sticks out to me is you did play the defensive drafting game well. And, you kind of maximized your positional advantage by taking Kelsey and Andrews back to back and then mm-hmm. doubling down, taking Goddard where you took him. Do I love your team over some of the other teams? Would I have made every pick you made? No, but I think you achieved one thing that nobody else in the draft really did. And it's they, honestly, there's only one or two teams in the whole league that even has a shot to match you at the starting tight end position. Mm-hmm. And if Kyle Pitts doesn't work out or, George Kittle doesn't work out like that's an advantage. Nobody can take away from you and you hoard it. You control it now, you know, like you can decide to trade Andrews. You could decide to trade Kelsey, but no one else can match it. I think that's underrated, especially when it's just a stock draft. Nobody can trade all those teams at the top. Mahomes, Hertz, Allen, Jackson, Burrow, Herbert, Lawrence fields. Guess what? They are all trying to win with the exact same roster construction. Only one of those teams right. got a second quote unquote elite quarterback, right? Mm-hmm. Everyone else was like, all right, I'm going to have to take a running back. I'm going to have to take a receiver. You went, no, I got an elite quarterback. And now I just separated myself from everybody else that started at quarterback. I also got the tight end position locked down. So I think that's the one thing. If your receivers hit and you can find running back production, you know, just randomly, I think you have an advantage over the other teams that are even built the same way that you are. Well, here he has running back production. He's got Najee and who are your other running backs? Yeah, I'll, I'll read down for people who are looking at the screen, uh, listening on replay. I will just read out the rest. So after Goddard in the six, I took Ayuk, then Deontay Johnson, Aaron Jones. I got Tannehill in the 10th. Then I went Lockett, Downs, Bigsby. And this is where I just started, you know, hammering running backs and, and other random players. But um, yeah, what I was going to, what I was going to mention to, yeah. So with, with this startup and Scott, let's go ahead and get off of the, uh, the shared screen here. So if you could help me out with the overlay with this startup, I, I really wanted to, 
I guess it, it maybe wasn't smart to be this rigid in uh, in this in this method, but I didn't want to take any of the the trap tier, like the Jalen Waddle. I didn't want to. I wanted to try a build where I didn't mix into that mess, you know. In terms of a flat tier, it's kind of a kind of a trap tier, don't you agree, Scott? Haven't you said that in the past too? It's it's a, it's a funky one that Waddle Alave range. I don't want to say it's a trap tier, but you're essentially just kind of hitting a double in that tier and you're just chasing everyone else that also hit a double. If that makes sense. Like, I think you're probably pretty sure you're not getting elite production from Shane's going to snarf at this one, you know, Chris Alave, right? He loves Chris Alave. But I think if you're drafting Jalen Waddle, Amon Ross St. Brown, T Higgins, Devonte Smith, you're getting a very good receiver that, needs some luck to be a guy that's a high warp or a difference making receiver. So it feels like you're just kind of checking a box. Hey, this is what you need to do in round three, because that's what's usually on the board. You went the other way. You're like, let me literally go to the extreme with every pick until I'm forced to get back to roster construction. Now, I think the cool thing about this exercise is I don't know if this was intended to work this way, but I think it actually forced everybody in the draft most likely to think about the construction of their team because you couldn't trade in the startup. You couldn't wait and see what was on the board, what was slipping, what was getting faded and then go and get it. You had to essentially think about your pick. Like, okay, if I take a tight end here, there's going to be 18 more receivers that get picked before I pick again. Do I really want to do that? Cause you couldn't bail yourself out. And a lot of times if you said, Hey, I want to fix my roster construction. Now you probably have to trade Travis Kelsey or Mark Andrews, which defeats the purpose of why you did it in the first place. Exactly. So I think it's a good exercise to really think about it. If you couldn't trade, if you couldn't go and leverage other people for future assets or anything like that, how would you truly build? And I bet you a lot of people would go, man, do I really want to take the wide receiver five Jalen Waddle when next time it comes around, I can get the wide receiver 10 Devonte Smith. Or is there, is there another place I'd rather go because I think I have higher upside by taking an elite running back or taking an elite tight end? And when you couldn't trade, you got to think about that stuff more than I think people typically do. Anthony West, thank you very much for the super chat, man. Appreciate you. It's one of two here. He's in a startup currently. It's a 12-team super flex PPR, 1.5 for tight end, start 11, 25-man roster. So that's fairly shallow in terms of total roster spots, right, Scott? A little bit, maybe by a few spots. Uh, five taxi. Uh, I guess, sorry, real quick. Does the taxi count towards the total roster spots? It does, right? So start I, 1130, man. That's actually pretty, yeah. pretty spot on with the proportion you like, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Okay. So QBs are Josh Allen, Daniel Jones, Mac Jones. Running backs are Kenneth Walker, the third, Roshan, Tank Bigsby. Wide receivers, Waddle, QJ, Christian Kirk. Tight ends are Schultz, McBride. Two of two is I traded back a lot, have 524 first, uh, second, what is that? Three fourteens. Oh, okay. So traded back and got three fourteenth rounders, oh, two fifteens, okay. and the rest of my own picks left. Hundred dollar buy in. Thoughts? Late round position targets, moves. Thanks, guys. You're the best. Thanks, Anthony. So we see what he's got here so far. I, I was gonna Good go, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm looking at this roster and I'm hoping that the next page says he's got a bunch of future picks because Yep. Otherwise, he probably traded up to get like Josh Allen and way overpaid. And then all of a sudden we're left with no assets and no future picks. But then he says he's got the five first. That's a pretty average team. I think he posted on the first screen. Yeah. But, you know, the beauty of an average team in a start 11 is one or two strokes of luck that go your way. And you're now the team that's threatening the playoffs in year one. And, and you have five firsts. Five first. <laughs> and you can go to the teams that maybe you got there first and their teams uh, suck or tanked or didn't go how they expected. And now you're sitting on maybe a gold mine of, hey, man, your pick's going to be top three next year. You you tried to win and it didn't work. You know, you want to yeah. send me a couple pieces. You, you know what I mean? You may be able to buy a 15% shot at the championship this year by trading two of those five firsts. And if it doesn't work, oh, well, you still have three firsts going into next year. You're still set up to just make your team exponentially better over the next two years. So I like how he built. I think this is a great, 
great, like, man, I'm dipping my toe in. But if I don't win, I'm not screwed because I have an elite quarterback. I got a bunch of picks. I got some young players. I'm good still. So let's just address this real quick because he said late round position, targets, moves. Let's just take a look real quick at what he's got so far and roster construction wise where he may look to keep going throughout this this startup so he's got again Allen, daniel jones mac jones and then running backs he's got three of them he's got three wide receivers and two tight ends i think at this point he can just 1.5 tight end premium just not take another tight end correct <laughs> unless there's like some you know r- ridiculous deal but tight what would you what would you look to do here i know it's hard to say but I mean, I think Shane and I both agree that you don't you don't start taking more tight ends. Otherwise, you turn into one of those teams that has like seven below average tight ends and you can't flex yeah. them. But I I don't know, Shane, what do you think? I bet you the receivers are probably in round 14 and 15. They're probably not. They're fucking disgusting. They're not <laughs> threshold receivers. You may find a random. Wandale. Like KJ Osborne. You're not finding someone Wondell like that, but. Yeah, you're finding KJ Osborne. Look, I'm just filling up on running backs and quarterbacks. That's literally all I'm done. Anything that I can find that's going to have trade value in the season. And, and the ch- chances of that are probably low, but I, I'd rather take the chance on a running back or a quarterback there than I would KJ Osborne or any wide receiver in that tier who would have to literally kill every one of his teammates, not get caught um, to be a fantasy asset to you. Well, he has the knife cut. He kills all his teammates and goes to jail. He can't score points. Yeah, the, the plan is ruined. Yeah, the plan is completely ruined. So he's <laughs> trying to get away with it. Man, that, I thought that plan was going to work great. I was going to get all Justin Jefferson's yeah. targets. But, man, yeah. they caught me on video getting yeah. rid of him. Sorry, that's, right. that's probably uh, Okay, so so this, I have to just throw this up. Uh, Colin, thank you for the super super sticker. And I love how he, he uses that as it, his avatar, the don't F this up thumbnail I made. But anyway, ugly people need love, too. Shane was talking about, I, I guess, I can... ugly people. I think. Dak Prescott and Kirk Cousins, Kirk Cousins. Yeah. were were being mentioned when you when look. You I'm ugly. I need that. love too. I get it. I understand. KJ Osborne saves lives, not kills. Okay. Did you see that? He saved a guy in a fire like last weekend. Oh, right. so for the fact he, that we joked we joked about him being the one that would kill his teammate was that's his right. next. That's Shane's next TLF. All right, Sh- yeah. Shane's next article is how KJ Osborne's a buy. Charlie, thank you for the super chat. Professor Charlie T. The hashtag for tonight's super chat is a bridge too far. So this is a super flex. We, we know this team. We're, we're starting to learn, learn his team pretty, pretty well here. Uh, running backs are Henry, Najee, Sanders, and their handcuffs, plus some rookies. Wide receivers, G. Willie, DK, Devontae Smith, Alave, Ridley, Flowers. Quarterbacks are Allen, Watson, AR-15. She traded Ridley for RB depth, got offered uh, WST backs. Washington. Washington. <laughs> is, is, that what he, is that what he meant? Yeah, yeah, got offered Washington backs. What's the right value slash process, early, yeah. or is it too early? God, he almost did so well again. He messed up with a... Uh, T T H issue. So I actually dug into Calvin Ridley um because I had, he was on the DLF article. Someone had asked me if he's going to be the wide receiver one in Atlanta or excuse me in Jacksonville. And just instinctually, I was like, of course he is. And then I dug into him a little bit and I'm like, oh wait, he's not actually any better than Christian Kirk. Um so I don't know that he's going to be any better than Christian Kirk. That could get a little uglier than I thought it was going to be. Washington backfield so ugly. I, I better be getting Chris Rodriguez too. Then give me them all. Yep, uh, I picked I picked him up. I like Rodriguez. Uh, what do you think, Scott? So here, let me let me put this back up. Uh, no. Trade Ridley for RB depth? No, no. And, and one simple reason is Ridley is still. I agree with Shane. We had this debate over on the the DD discord about Calvin Ridley versus Christian Kirk. People see Calvin Ridley as like this. He's not a slot only receiver. So he's an outside potential alpha receiver yet. You literally look at historically him and Christian Kirk. It's not that different. Ridley had a slightly higher ceiling for like a 10 week stretch, but that's it. So to say, oh man, he's just automatically the best receiver in that room. No, 
the same time people like him, though, people believe it. Why would I trade him for a running back today? Why, let me wait until the running back is hitting during the season and then still trade Calvin Ridley or equal receiver for that running back because what are people going to want to do if a running back like Brian Robinson starts out hot? Shane, Brian Robinson scores four touchdowns in the first three weeks. What are you going to be saying to do? Sell, sell him. Sell. Sell. So that, yeah. there's going to be, and maybe it's not Brian Robinson, but there's going to be a motivated seller that's going, this running back, it's unsustainable. Who will sell him? Who will give me something that's not a running back for him? Who will give me a receiver or a draft pick? That's when you strike, not now. Okay, so we have 271 eyeballs in here. Thank you very much for joining. If you wouldn't mind, look down, hit that little thumbs up. Give us a like. We'd appreciate that. Easiest way to help out the channel. This uh, this is a small but mighty channel, man. We're getting up to, what, 8,900 subscribers or something? Very close to uh, 9,000. It was 8.9 earlier this morning uh, when I checked. And I've been really, really sensitive about the size of our uh, viewership ever since someone told us that we're not allowed to. We must defer to um, bigger pod, uh, bigger. Uh, the fantasy footballers. Yeah, bigger. I don't want to say their name because I don't want to anger anyone. Um, but we must defer to uh, places that have bigger uh, viewership because apparently bigger viewership means that they're better at this than us. We love our 8,900 plus subscribers. I could name that's, every that's one of them. That's for damn sure. You think I the could name every single one. You think the footballers could name all 300,000 subscribers to their YouTube video, their YouTube channel? Not a chance, but I could name every 8.92 subscribers, 8.92 thousand subscribers. So let me ask you this for a startup. How do you prefer? Let, let's talk about settings for a bit. Do you prefer to do a derby startup order? Yes. Yes. Okay. So a derby, I'll go ahead and explain this if, if anybody listening doesn't know. So essentially, let's just picture we're using sleeper. We go in, we randomize the draft order. And then that order is going to be the order of people picking their spots in the startup. So you have this randomized draft order and Scott chooses first. He's going to choose the, the 101. The next person in the order is Shane. He's going to choose the 106, be really random and weird. Then the third person gets to choose everything except for 101 and 106. So anyway, moving on. So yeah, I, I like Derby style as well. Let's talk. Um, what else about settings, guys? Is is important? Third round reversal in a snake draft. Are you guys pro third round reversal? I mean, it it makes it more fair just based on where the current player pool lands. Obviously, the person that gets the one hundred one, one hundred two, one hundred three. I mean, there's a reason. If you win the derby, you're probably picking the one hundred one. Maybe you get cute and you pick the one hundred three or wherever your tier break is with the elite quarterbacks. But you're probably not going, hey, give me that 112 because I get the third round reversal. But it's just throwing them a little bit of a bone. You know, if you got stuck with the 112 or the right. 111, you're going to get another player that's higher in the tier than the person going back to, you know, the 101 that's now going to pick at the 312 and the 401. I still don't think it's that big of an advantage, but it's better than the way it would be if you don't do it. And right. it makes you just feel a little bit better like, hey, we're evening things out. I would still trade all those picks for the 101 if I got stuck with the 112. Not particularly close. But yeah, I think you got to do third round reversal. I, I just like it because I, I think it, it it does add a, a little more strategy. I don't know if it adds a ton. But more than more importantly than that, it, it adds the element or the, uh, the innuendo of strategy and a reason for people to be more active. Like people just, you know what I mean? Like they put more thought in it. Like, oh, well, I got to take the 112 here because then I'll get the uh, the 201 and then the 301, which isn't that bad or whatever the reversal is. If anyone knows me, knows that I was DMing Scott last week uh, asking him uh, exactly how third round reversals work. Um, but I'm fine with it. Anything that makes the league, I guess, more active and more fun, and that's what third round reversals seem to do. People seem to not like not having them they just don't they're like I, I oh this is stupid we should really have it like all right i'll just acquiesce and we'll have it as long as it's not adding idp players to the mix i'm fine yeah scott you mentioned how you know if somebody gets cute and goes 103 instead of the 101 whatever their tier break is for the elite ones i feel like with third round reversals people do get cute you can see people getting i think 
thinking thinking it over too much a, li- a little bit you know when they're picking their spot get getting a little cute but well anyway. i'd say the, the only time i think someone's getting cute is if they if you have the sh- shot at the 101 right and then you go no i'm taking 103 that's being too cute by half okay because at that mm-hmm. point just take the one-on-one and get the best player. Like, just go get Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. I, I can see if you don't want to make the choice and you're like, oh, I don't know who I really like between Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, and Jalen Hurts. Well, whatever. Grow a sack and, and pick someone. Um, but, like, when you're looking at, like, all right, should I take the 110 versus the 102? I think that's actually strategic when you're deciding, all right, well, this is going to affect how I build the rest of my roster. Okay, Josh, thank you for the super chat. He's got an inbox offer, so let's help him out here. Russ, Judy, Addison, Ramondre. So Russ Wilson, Jerry, Judy, Addison, Ramondre for Gino, DK, Tyreek, and Mixon. Trying to swap Russ with Stafford and Judy with Pittman. What are your thoughts? So as is, which side do you take? I'm, I'm sorry. He's getting Gino, DK, Tyreek, and Mixon? Yeah. What? Why is this? A, do it. Give me the, Give me that. Yeah, this isn't a question. This and you're getting thing. a little risky trying to substitute Matt Stafford for Russell Wilson and Michael Pittman for Jared. The other person may get turned right. off on that and go walk away from the table. That is like trying to rope your girlfriend's friend into the mix. Like you're like, hey, I think this might work out if I try this tonight. Like you never want to just throw it's that getting out greedy. There. Yeah. It's getting, yeah, and then it all falls apart and you get nothing. So no, that's a don't don't get too cute there. Seems yeah, to be our okay. phrase for the night. Don't be too. Don't and, get and this is a clean four for four trade. You're trading a quarterback, two receivers, and a running back. So it should be very easy to just go down the line of your roster construction and say, who do I prefer? Literally, Russ for Geno Smith. You could probably call that a wash if you wanted to. Then you get to the other two receivers, Addison, Judy for Tyreek and DK Metcalf. I'll take the Tyreek and DK Metcalf side. And then it's where do I lose in the trade? Mixon versus Ramondre. I, I'll take the shot on Mixon for the short yeah. term. They're both running backs. So, yeah, take the deal. Okay, let's move to this one right here. We've got a from Michael, a super chat. Thank you very much. Four point per passing touchdown, super flex startup. Do you spend a third of your budget on one QB or do you get hammers cheaper at other positions for a more balanced roster? So I guess we're, we're moving over to talking about auction and we've, we've been asked for startup auction content and that'll be part of a, a startup series that we're doing hint, hint, but do you spend a third of your budget on one QB in a super flex? Well, let me ask you this. Are you okay with knowing that this is at least a two year build? Cause you're going to suck terribly in the first year when you spend a third on one player. Like if you can live with that, cool go with it you know what i mean but i just and this is a problem i have at auctions i can't I, I i end up being this guy like a lot of times i'll just overcommit to one player and then i'm like why did why did i do that like the smart play is no i'm not going to put a third of anything into one player unless somehow we get to the end of the the, the uh auction and then some of the star players are coming out and then you know everyone's budgets aren't as high I, i'm gonna have to disagree with my uh best friend over there shane because i think there's nuance you're, you're to that question <laughs> Well, listen, if I told you, Shane, you only have to win eight players in that auction, does it change? But yeah, but we're assuming that it's a big boy. No, 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 no. We're assuming that you have to win a full roster. I believe the listener league we did last year, you only had to win, I believe, 12 players or 16 players coming out of the startup. So when -hmm. when you start saying, okay, if it's going to be, let's say it's 30 man rosters, but you only have to leave the auction with 12. You're betting now that not everybody is going to leave the auction with 30. A lot of people are going to go, man, Shane's getting Patrick Mahomes for $330. Am I really going to break all of my assets up into 30 players with the same budget? Or am I going to not be able to compete? Because you have to think about this. If the waiver wire is giving you in a lineup league, let's just say it's a start 11, right? There's a pretty good bet if you're sharp and you kind of understand how to roster construct, you can find 10 players on waivers throughout the course of a season that are pretty close to the same value that most of the people in the startup filled their startup team with. Mm -hmm. So now it's like this is a 20-man auction for me. And if I end up with seven studs and I fill out eight more players that are just average placeholder players, 
I'd rather have that than the guy that split his entire budget on 30 average players. Yeah, that person's think, gonna be but it's not that binary. It's it's there's it, there's it isn't, great but because I'm my not, point not, is those parameters, I'm not I I agree with you. You need to know those parameters. You need to know what is the value of waiver wire players, how deep are the rosters during the season. Do they expand? How are the rookie picks? How deep do they go? Is it a two-round rookie draft? Is it a five-round rookie draft? How many players do you have to... You cannot answer this question without knowing those other constraints in the auction. If I told you you have to leave the auction with 30 players, you're not spending $330 on one quarterback. But if you only have to win 10, 12, I, I, would, I would pay 330 for... I'd pay six sixty for two quarterbacks, well, here's and then I would bully everybody else that's trying sure. to match me because mm -hmm. they're going to be going. Damn, Scott has Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts, and he has three hundred and twenty dollars left. I better start spending my money. I'm not doing the. I'm going to buy thirty players if he has two elite quarterbacks. Well, oh, and that's the thing. It's not binary though. It's not like I can only spend money or not. Or I can only spend money at one player or on every player. You know what I mean? It's not a communist versus democratic society. I don't know even the right analogy but whatever i'll use it um i can go you know what i'm going to use a ton of money i'm going to save money on the quarterback but i'm going to spend a ton of money on this one 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 wide receiver but then i'm going to save money and spend it on these tier three wide receivers like you, you can definitely do that i i, I just need everyone to know I'm, I'm terrible at auction and uh every auction i go into is at least a two-year build for me <laughs> at least a two-year build. I know that going in because I know I'm going to do so poorly in the draft that, you know, it's funny. It's like Scott says, a lot of the times I just want to come out with like specific like stud players. And I'm like, hey, I got a stud quarterback, a stud wide receiver, a stud tight end, and future rookie picks. All right, we can start building this for next year. I will always spend up on at least one league QB in an auction. Hint, hint to uh, to our upcoming listener leagues because we'll be doing auctions for those. But I and, will, and they are now more buy. excited because they have realized that Shane is going to be a donation. So they're, they're okay. they have a better shot at winning than they did five minutes ago. Look, know thyself, right? I could go into an auction and pretend I think I know I'm going to build a competing team. Like, look, the hope is always build a competing team, right? That's always what you hope in year one. But right. I'm just more realistic. Like, I never, I'm never a guy that's like, hey, productive struggle. Guess what? In auctions, I'm shooting for productive struggle. At least, you know, it's not just a struggle. Let's make sure that there's actually really some productive tied to it. Let's go to this one here. So thank you for the super chat, Ginicora. We'll go with that. Love Tuesdays now. Thank you very much. We love Tuesdays as well. 10 team super flex start 12 startup draft with rookies. Say I can get my two elite QBs, even if I have to spend huge for the second QB, what is the strategy for me to then punt for the future? Truly don't care how brutal my first year is. So, I mean, is this, is this a case where you get Kyler? Where you get Kyler and Anthony Richardson. I know he says like spend huge for two elite QBs, but I, I feel like this is where you would want Kyler cheap. Go ahead. Okay. So here's one of my issues with this. If you're truly going to go get two elite QBs naturally, just understanding like wins over replacement or warp on QBs. When you get the two elite QBs, especially if you really spend up, let's say you spend for Jalen hurts and Patrick Mahomes. You spend tons to get both of those. You've now put yourself basically already in the playoffs in, almost in the top eight of the, <laughs> yeah. you're put yourself in the top eight of the league. If you just fill a team with replacement level players, the rest of the way. So you can't really go get two elite quarterbacks, spend more than everybody and then expect to tank. You know what I mean? I think I'm kind of with you. Like if you're going to take that strategy and you want to tank, you need to go get Kyler Murray, Anthony Richardson, and tank and get the 101 next year to where you now have Caleb Williams to where you have a leverage piece over the rest of the group. If I'm going to get two elite quarterbacks, I'm I'm trying to win with the right roster construction, but understanding if I don't win, all I have to do is fill in the gaps of what didn't work aside from my QBs. Well, like if you want to get you, – you really want to get fun, yeah, you take Kyler here, right? And then you take – hopefully you have second year taxis and you're like, eh, I got Chris Olave, Garrett Wilson, and uh, I don't care. 
Drake London. And guess what? They're all going on the tax. It sucked my balls. This this is going to be a terrible year. So I'm going to do this. Those three guys are going on the taxi. Kyler's not playing the week eight. I'm getting Caleb Williams or Drake May and adding this to it, promoting those guys from the taxi. And then next year, everyone's like, wait, I don't understand. Didn't you go 0 and 11 last year? And you're like, yeah, I didn't even play all the games. I only played 11 and you guys said I couldn't play anymore. <laughs> um, and now I'm coming in here and I'm, I'm ready to run the league. Ready to smash faces. Mm. Yeah. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you for that super chat. Okay. Let's keep on rolling here. I saw another one here. Juice TV just subscribed. Welcome, Juice T- TV. We got an thank awesome freaking tribe here. You're going to, you're going to enjoy. Um, okay. Let's see right here. Let's keep. Oh, going. I went crazy and just started starting all time. Yeah. You started, stuff. started tired of starting a bunch of shit. Yeah. Darth Dookie, thank you for the super chat. Creepiest avatar on YouTube. 100 percent the creepiest avatar on youtube he's be like oh that's my kid uh, i was gonna one say two, that's my baby picture one of two 10 teams start eight so super shallow ppr burrow etn acres chase Lave, london andrews jsn yesterday i was offered addison walker and a future second for Alave. Is this something I should consider or keeping Olave as, as, as he's the most valuable piece in a shallow league? Currently watching from 30, 33,000 feet up. Thanks, guys. Y'all are awesome. All right, I hope to God he's not the pilot. <laughs> like, you should not be watching this. You should, I watch Air Disasters a lot on the Smithsonian Channel. And um, you'd be surprised. Oh, you're, I, you're that guy? Yes. Pilots really should be paying attention. So hopefully if Darth Dookie's a pilot, he's, he's not watching. Okay. Well, I'm going to abstain from this question because it involves Christopher Alave. So th- this well, is a this is a process versus player trade that I think Shane needs to answer. I mean, he was offered Addison and a second, and Walker. Kenneth Walker. It, yeah, I know what I said. Uh, Addison, Kenneth Walker, and a second for Alave. No, and a start eight. No, you don't give up the wide receiver three in dynasty for that. You just don't. <laughs> I, I would just like in, in a trade like that, just like he's he's saying in a, in a shallow format, if he wants to do that, just instead of Addison and the second, what else can I get? Like Walker plus, you know, what else except for Addison and the second? That's what I always like to do in, in trades is be like, okay, can you get that stuff? Can you consolidate that stuff into one yeah, like it, piece? Yeah, can the second and Walker you know? be a first? But even then, I mean, it's a start eight, and I get what you're saying. Addison you Walker it. and a first. Would you do that? Addison Walker and a first. Oh, I, I, if that second I, becomes I, a I, first, are you just taking it? I would I, think I, I about it. For a lot of I would think about it. <laughs> she yeah. would think about it. He loves he Chris. One. Put Chris Alave up in that hammer auction, and that it's is Chris Alave. It's yeah, Chris yeah. Alave, Garrett. Well, no, I'm not going to get those two. It's Chris Alave and Garrett Wilson. Look, if you if you are trying to buy discount Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, right? Because you're like, all right, I want to take the shot on a guy that could be those guys. I said could be. Don't get all excited, people. Um, those are the two that you're going to do it with. Now, meanwhile, Jordan Addison will come out and. Have 1700 receiving yards in his rookie year, supplanting yeah, right. Jefferson. Hey, real quick, can I hijack this live stream for a uh, for an inbox trade that I have with one of our uh, with one of our subscribers? So, it's a league where I have my quarterbacks are Lamar Jackson, Trevor Lawrence, Kenny Pickett, Kenneth Pickett, and Justin Fields. Okay, do I trade Kenneth Pickett? For Desmond Ritter and a 24 second. 12 team super flex start 11. I would do that. See, you. bye. Nope. It's interesting because I would expect Scott to say, yes, he would do it because that's what you want to do with, you know, one of those lesser tier quarterbacks. Well, I'm curious about that, Scott. Why do you say no? Uh, I mean, listen, when you come from a background in negotiation like me, guess what? I have all the leverage here. I'm helping you fix your QB room when you clearly feel a little unsettled about it. I'm just not in a hurry to make that day. Do I even like Kenny Pickett that much? No. Do I think there's a range of outcomes where Desmond Ritter and Kenny Pickett are the same for fantasy and I'm getting a free second? Yes. I'm not bailing somebody out with that trade right now. I ain't bailing anybody out. That's not seriously. Me giving you Kenny Pickett ain't bailing you out, my friend. It my my point is then you know what get me your get me your twenty four first I don't want Desmond Ritter I'm gonna bet against the trade you just made that's not I'm the not offer that was made two, to us 
Sir. And, and, and sir. that's why I that's why you declined the trade. And you found you the trade. And and he and then she moves on and she says, Well then fuck you. I'm taking my Desmond Ritter in my second, and I'm going to see if I can go get Daniel Jones or go uh, for it. Matt Jones, your favorite. Go for it. Go Have for it. Have fun with that. Have fun with that. Okay. A to Z. Thank you for the super chat. Thank you guys. In a 10 team super flex dynasty, give Russ for 224 seconds and Antonio Gibson. Other QBs are Pickett, Howell, Purdy, Tanny, and has the 102 in the upcoming rookie draft. 10 teamer, I'm okay with this. Can I then yeah. flip Antonio Gibson? It doesn't look like this team is winning, so I'm fine with taking this because it's a 10 teamer. Variants of those picks, you could end up with pick 11 and pick 12, which is essentially like too late first. So I'd be okay doing this deal. Give for us for 224 seconds and Antonio Gibson. Uh, yeah, it's fine. I, I, I don't believe in Russell Wilson, so I have absolutely no problem moving on from Look, I've seen Aaron Rodgers trade it for two seconds. So if I live in a world where that can happen, I, I can certainly move Russell. Uh, let's ride Westbrook. Nope, nope, wrong guy. Uh, whatever his name is, it <laughs> yeah. doesn't matter. Miss that yeah. one. Him. A hey, quick question while I'm turning off the the super chats. Thank you to everyone who who gave them tonight. We appreciate that. All goes into uh, editing Shane's car windows, Dunkin' Donuts. You know he actually does buy coffee with all the super chat money, probably. But but no, we appreciate you. Um, I was going to ask though, when is a talk to me about the strategy around collecting 24 picks right now? Like, is it something that you're trying to do? Like, is this a good time of year to try to get 24 picks, uh, even even seconds, 24 seconds? But I was starting that last year. That's why I'm looking at my 24 portfolio already. And I'm like, oh, I got three firsts in that league, three firsts in that league, two in that league. Like, that's something that I was doing last year. Like, I've already moved on to starting to try to get 25s. Um, but, yeah, if I can still get 24s, I'm certainly collecting them. Like I just traded uh, Kadarius Tony and some other sub uh, optimal player. Oh, Jamo, Jamo, uh, <laughs> Jamison Williams together for 24 first yesterday. And I was like, nice. cool. I spammed everyone else in the league that had, you know, first, and I was spamming them for 25 first just to get the first. But yeah, if you can still get 24 first, definitely you should be collecting firsts and seconds. I do not, thirds and fourths are fine for whatever. You want to buy some running back depth in season, sure. But really, fixated on the first yeah i've shifted this is kind of be an, another whole show we could do but i've kind of shifted towards buying any first versus trying to buy this the targeted selected first just for example to the listeners that deal clay just mentioned that person if they if this, someone comes to you and says clay you got a strong qb room you have kenny pickett as your qb4 i think i can contend if i can get kenny pickett which is essentially what he's doing if he's trying to trade for him you immediately go hmm how can I really make a nice leverage bet against this guy? It isn't Desmond Ritter in a second. <laughs> it's, if you really think Kenny Pickett is a piece away, get his 24 first. That's the team where you could look up next year and go, damn, I traded this poor soul Kenny Pickett for that 102. And you didn't even need Kenny Pickett. You know, like that. That's the kind of trade I want to make, especially someone asked a question that I don't think we're going to get to tonight. But they ask a question about when you've accumulated a ton of extra assets, what do you do? And I think some mm -hmm. people get way, we've done some roster reviews where people just show up and they have 30 good assets in a start nine. And now they have to consolidate and they're trying to go, well, how many firsts should I trade for Chris Olave? Well, when you have 20 firsts and no stud receivers, what's the answer? As many as it takes to get them, right? You got to get some consolidation. Yep. But I think the strategy is not to go get any 24 first. It's to look at the teams and go, man, that guy thinks he's Kenny Pickett away from the championship. How do I get his first? Because that's flawed thinking. You know, you're betting against the bet that he's trying to make against you. So I think look, getting targeted first that you can maybe turn into like lottery picks, that's where the real money is going to be made. Not having the 110 next year just because you have a first. Unless you can buy stuff in season. Give me all the first. I'll take <laughs> your first. I'll take pandemics first. Although I will say when I'm when I'm making trades and I'm sending away people's firsts, I, I definitely look at who I'm sending away. When Shane is sending away his For own sure. first, he is very cognizant of where that pick could be. I'm cognizant, <laughs> really, of, of all 24 firsts. Like, honestly, there, there's a one league in particular that we're all three of us in. I happen to have you, yours 
and uh, Clay's first. And I know compared to the other person's first that I have, yeah, um, that I'd much rather part with uh, yours than theirs, uh, you two than uh, theirs. So we're good in that league? Yeah, you might not. I need to recheck that. (laughs) I think I might need to sell your first. So Clay's or, or fake you, good, or right? You might need, like he's, yeah, yeah. They think Clay's good, but he's really not. So Shane should trade his first. Well, like you know, there's certain leagues um, that I'm trying to buy co-hosts first. You know, where other people. I'm, have, hey, I've always tried to get yours. I, I, there, I hear you. Yeah. There, that's that's good process. Is get Shane. There's Manila's a couple leagues I'm in or... where I'm like, all right, if I could get uh, his first and his first, then then I'm fine making this deal, one or the other. But if you're trying to give me your first, no. So I am a little cognizant of it. But that's when you know one team's going to be absolutely dreadful versus one could be good. Um, but in general, I just want any first I can get my hands on. You know the psychological impact of a first. Yep. For sure. So Jorge has a quick question here. So Burrow or Hertz with the 103 pick and a 12 team super flex it says dynasty chat, but I'm guessing it just means dynasty startup. Is it PPJ? I, it, six point give, passing give me, touchdown? What is it? Give me, I, I think give this me is a hurts. hot take. You can argue Hertz over Josh Allen, truthfully. Yeah. I think he'll, his efficiency last year was where Allen's has been. And He's three years younger than Allen. He runs more than Allen. I, I think Hertz versus Allen is a debate at 102 versus right. there's a clear bur- tear break at 103. So I think then it gets into Burrow, Herbert, Lawrence, Lamar. But yeah, I dig Hertz here for sure. I mean, Hertz is in the debate for 101. And the only reason that he's not is because Scott has pointed this out. Patrick Mahomes is just ungodly and he does it with absolutely no weapons like literally it wouldn't matter who is on that roster excuse me he does have weapons travis kelsey is obviously a weapon but it was travis kelsey and like marky mark and the funky bunch as the wide receivers last year it was terrible juju smith schuster mvs sky Moore, just trash cans um so we've seen like mahomes can do it under any circumstances really i and i love hurts and he could take off but I, I don't know, like what happens if AJ Brown gets hurt and then he's thrown to Devonta Smith and uh, Quez Watkins? That'd be a little scary. Be a little scary. At the Dynasty just says, "Thank you for the super chat." Just saying, what's up to my boys? Keep up the great work, Arnold JJ. What is that last part? Am I missing some inside joke there, Mister? No. <laughs> no, he's a he's a patron. Yeah. Shout out to him. Appreciate Good you, stuff. man. Yeah, thanks, man. Appreciate that. All right, so we will move that one here. Let's go to uh, ta, ta, ta. We'll hit another one from Willie Three Sticks. Thank you for your super chat. PSA to anyone on the fence: their roster reviews are fantastic, helpful, and candid evaluation of your of your team. Appreciate all you guys do for the community. Hey, we appreciate you, man. This might be uh, so Willie Three Sticks. That might be Will Best's review that you just did. I believe it was yesterday, maybe the day yeah. before yesterday. And Will, you're next up with your second review. Thank you very much for these kind words, by the way. You're up for your second one. And I guess I should go ahead and just talk about where we're at with reviews. We've got a wait list that we're kind of just working off of and taking little chunks off of that wait list here and there to try not to have too big of a, uh, a backlog. But, um, but yeah, Scott and Shane do an awesome job with reviews. We get, I get a million emails like this saying, Hey, it was amazing. I, I could share every single one of them with Scott and Shane, but they already know it and they already get a million emails and DMS as it is. So I can just spare them. Um, unless it's a, unless it's a hilarious review, but anyway, thank you, Willie three sticks. Okay. So let's go to, let's go to blinds question here. Thank you for the super chat. What second year players are you high or low on second year players? Where are you at with Traylon Burks? I love him. I, he, he is a. He's a double. He's a guy that essentially is just going to kind of help you start a rally, but I don't think you're going to get more than that. So he's a piece. I want to have exposure, but I've bought him and I've sold him. He's just a commodity. He's someone I'm willing to sell based on the fact, hey, I think he's in not a great situation and he didn't do a ton as a rookie. And then I can also go, well, he was injured as a rookie. His situation can't get much worse. So it's just, he's neutral to me. I, I take him over George Pickens and Jahan Dotson two other mm-hmm. second year players, Ooh. which I've been very clear on 
Destination Dynasty that neither of those guys are any good, but people seem to love them even more than Traylon Burks, at least, uh, well, both of them. I can see people liking both those guys over Burks. I like Pickens, not over many people, but I do like them over Burks, and I don't specifically or essentially or I don't know what word I'm using, but I don't especially like Dotson either, and guess what? I would take Dotson every night of the week over uh, Burks. Um, I have zero. Why don't you Burks. like? Why don't you like Burks? He face planted as a rookie. That's all I need. You don't get like. And again, I know people are like they, they always want to add this narrative to it. Yeah, but and, but again, I, I feel like I write about this in the DLF mailbag at least once every three weeks, where I go, "This is a list of wide receivers with horrible fantasy scores when they were a rookie," and everyone's like, "Yeah, but this is different because he had asthma." And I'm like, dude, you can literally go through every wide receiver that you want to that was a rookie drafted in whatever round you want. And there was some narrative of why things were going to get better. This week it was someone asking me about, um, Jesus, who's on the um, Patriots? Is it Patriots? Where Bill O'Brien just go? I'm sorry. Tyquan Thornton? Tyquan Thornton, yes. Someone asked me about Tyquan Thornton. And I was like, you know, basically like, well, he doesn't matter as a person. But as a, as a, as a subject, just in general. Rookie wide receivers. Here's every rookie wide receiver that scored 5.1 fantasy points per game on 45 targets or, or more last year in their career. And it was like him and a bunch of other dudes that I don't even know for real people. And I'm like, you could go down that list and every one of them would have had a narrative. So that's just, it, it's just always going to be my take on it. Like I'll be wrong. And you know, the 30% of the time I'm wrong, people could call me out on it. It's fine. I think it's interesting 100. that George Pickens and right. Traylon Burks only scored about a point difference per game. Neither of them hit double figures, so it's hard to say one face planted and the other didn't. A point is a very big point. <laughs> I'm Let's just go saying, to, uh... if, go, go to, look, Stadhead, I don't pay for a lot of uh, fantasy football content. I, I am a patron of Scott's. I am a patron of uh, several other places, but I pay for stat it because I love going in there and just pulling up stats and going, all right, well, let's see what the historical cohorts look like. And it's usually like. Change Ch- okay. did Drake London yeah. face plant. I'm so badly trying to put Hunter staying up here. And then you just keep. I'm just, I, if you're just going to go based on fantasy production, John Dotson actually share. outscored Jake. 30% London. target share. Okay. So now we're using other stuff, huh? Hunter Blaze is on the clock. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, let's see. So it's a 12 team start nine super flex, 4.5 points per passing touchdown, 0.75 PPR. And it looks like 1.25 PPR for tight ends. Quarterbacks are Jackson, Watson, Kyler. That's lovely. Running backs, Ramondre, Pollard, uh, James Cook, tight end, Andrews, wide receivers. Zay Christian Watson. I'm at the 812, have the 905, 1008, then a dead spot until the 13th. I'm really tempted to take love at 812. Is that stupid? He doesn't he doesn't need to go. I, I wonder what wide receivers are, are hanging out there. Mm-hmm. He doesn't need to take Jordan. Wide Watt. receiver threes. Yeah. So but here's here's the thing though. 12. The receivers that are on the board, let's say he can draft. So here I've got this up. So Deontay Johnson is kind of in that area. You got Mike Williams. Yeah, those types. Well, uh, so here's the thing, though. If he takes Jordan Love, guess what he just did? He just made his Kyler Murray pick even more valuable. Because now he can move Kyler Murray potentially for a more flexible construction that can get him a better receiver than what he's going to pick. So it doesn't look like, oh, man, I have four quarterbacks and then I only have one more pick until I have a three-round gap is probably what he's fearing. But doesn't it feel like you just enhanced your Kyler Murray pick right there if you're able to move Kyler Murray in three months for something even better? Like Jordan Love fits your construction and it literally allows you to slide Kyler Murray out for something even better. I'm fine with taking Jordan Love here. Yeah, and I, I look at look if I add a wide receiver three because I don't know, it doesn't matter the wide receivers on the board are wide receiver threes. If I add a wide receiver three, is he going to be helpful more helpful to my roster uh, than Jordan Love? Even if I just trade Jordan Love, just from that perspective, I could end up trading Jordan Love for more. Jordan Love comes out on fire, all of a sudden I can move him. You know how we love our young quarterbacks. I hope he comes out, runs for seventy yards, and and throws for one hundred and seventy, and he's the next Justin Fields, and then I can move him. 
Well, let me ask you this, Shane. If you needed a quarterback, would you trade Deontay Johnson for Jordan Love? Yes. Okay. If you didn't have any needs, would you trade Jordan Love for Deontay Johnson for no reason at all? No. Or would you probably say, hey, let me, I'm looking for a first-round pick or I'm looking for a two-for-one or you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I think this is where you get way too caught up and my roster has to look perfect. I got to have four receivers, three quarterbacks. Like, I get the roster construction argument, but it's the start of it. Right, You're not right. doomed by who you pick. Like, take Jordan Love there, and it, it gives you more flexibility at your other spots. How do you know you can't pivot off of – who was his QB1 again? I know he had he Watson and Lamar, Kyler. Lamar, Watson, Kyler. Yeah. So how do you know you couldn't pivot off of Lamar for, like, Justin Anthony Jefferson. Richardson plus a first or something? I mean, you could do something. You could do, you could do a lot of different things when you have yeah. those, those quarterbacks. You're and building value in the startup. Yeah, so he went in this startup that I'm in right now, a little bit different settings, but but fairly similar. So Jordan Love went 807 right next to Aaron Rodgers and Desmond Ritter. But anyway, um, I do like going Love at 812 because then you have the 905. So the difference in positional players there isn't going to be a big deal at right. all. So get Jordan Love there. Because 905, it's going to be neg negligible difference with the positional players. Okay. Yep. Cool. Let her rip. Hopefully that helped you out. Generic sports fan, one, two, three. Thank you for the super chat. 10 teams start 10, 2QB. T Law, Fields, Stroud, Howell, ETN, Gibbs, Dobbins, DK, Alave, Devontae Smith, JSN, Ridley, Mike Williams, Kittle at tight end. First year of competing after a two-year rebuild. Need to upgrade anywhere? Well, it looks like he did a pretty decent job of, you know, getting to where he can compete, right? I mean... I mean, yeah, it's pretty balanced. You got enough to probably fill all your optimal construction with all those spots. You have four QBs. One of them is Sam Howe, who's just a complete bonus if you get anything from him. So, I'm, I mean, I kind of like where he's at. Is this team one that's like automatically going to Smash. win? It's a little volatile, but mm -hmm. it feels like coming off of rebuild, you have pretty good roster construction. And my my strategy here would be need to upgrade. Yes, I, what I would want to do is I'd want to try to find a way to maintain this construction, but add some value somewhere. Shane, cover your ears, but could I move off of Chris Alave at wide receiver three prices and pivot down and pick up another piece? Something like that. Could I could I keep my construction and just kind of bet against some of the players that I have and still basically give myself the same shot to win? But I think he's good. I think he's in a good spot. You can uncover your ears now, Shane. I'm not talking about Chris <laughs> Olave. Okay, I guess he. Um, Look, Shane if you can trade, good. if you can trade Chris Olave and get Amon Ross St. Brown in the first back, do it. If you can trade Chris Olave and get Jalen Waddle in the first back, do it. If you can get Trade Chris Olave and get Garrett Wilson in a second back. Do it. They bite Shane to your league and you got a shot. Yeah. Yeah. You've got a shot. Shane, by the way, last night when we were recording one of our regular shows, he didn't even make it 18 seconds before losing focus and rerouting, <laughs> rerouting the start of the show. 18 <laughs> seconds is, is what Shane made. He, he doesn't pay attention during our shows. He doesn't listen to them. He doesn't watch them. I pay attention. He, he, just, he just goes on camera and just talks and hangs out with people on Tuesdays, and that's it. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. Okay. Let's move on to uh, Bradley Bryan. has got a three-parter. Let's knock this out. Thanks for the super chat. 12-team super flex, uh, two-point tight end premium, dynasty best ball startup draft, start 11. I like it. I like that format. Began by trading my second, third, and fourth rounders for the 107, his fifth and sixth. Beautiful. Used my 104 and the 107 to get Herbert and Lamar. The rest of my picks went like this. Ken Walker, Derek Henry, Kittle, Aaron Rodgers, Derek Carr. That's where I am so far. Thoughts? I'm looking to continue to hammer running back and wide receiver, grab some high upside tight ends, and maybe one more upside QB. It's a six point per passing touchdown league and also some other gadget scoring too. Thanks. Okay. So first off, we love that trade, right? Began by trading his second, third, fourth rounders for the 107, a fifth and a sixth. Crush that. 
right? I mean, especially in best ball, because you're yeah. looking at those picks like, man, I, I'm still getting probably a receiver or running back or a tight end in there. So yeah, you, that's a fish that, move to trade, trade somebody that one Oh seven for that. You don't even get any extra picks. You just moved around the board. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Because we say that we're willing to give up like our second, third and fourth to get like a one Oh seven and then also get back like an eighth and a ninth or like a ninth and a 10th we'd even do. So you don't necessarily have to start with what I just said. You can start with something like this and just see what happens if, if it's a uh, more casual league. Well, in best ball, it's even flatter though. Like, you know what I mean? Like that fourth and fifth, but they're not that different in best ball. They could probably actually they're the exact same almost in terms of how many times they spike and hit your lineup. So he, yeah, he, he crushed it. I, the only thing I'll say is this, you got enough quarterbacks here. Yeah. Best ball before I don't need to take another one. I would actually focus on taking more running backs because the running backs cut off quicker in best ball. You do not want to roster a bunch of Melvin Gordon's Kenyon Drake's like I will still roster those guys in lineups because I don't give mm-hmm. a shit if they're on a team right now. They're literally like, will they start one time in week 12? I'll roster them for that. In best ball, you don't want to hold somebody like that. You probably got to get some more running backs that you know have touches. Mm-hmm. Receivers, you can go. This is the format where you go, cool, KJ Osborne, Michael Gallup, Tyler Boyd. Like Those are just the sweeteners on this team because they're receivers. They're going to spike when they spike, and it's best ball. Yep. Yep. Well, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a fun, that's a fun build right there. That, that's a really nice build. Well done. Chris, thank you for the super chat. This is one of three, 12 teams, super flex, start 11, no tight end premium, pick eight. Traded second, fourth, 24 first, swapped a future second for a third and got back the 102 and the 1102 in a startup. So gave the second, his second rounder, fourth rounder, 24 first, and then they did a little swap. And he got back the 102 and 1102. So let's not worry about that little swap thing because it's just swapping a second and a third. So what do you think about that? Second, fourth, and a 24 first got the 102 and the 1102. So that breaks both golden rules. It it does. And I'll just say with the swap, if you have to do something like that swap, oh, I'm okay with it. Giving up a second for a third. Yeah. Even giving up a second or a third as a throw-in, Okay, I can live with that. It's the first that kind of gives you the, the the big piece that you can use at a later time. But yeah, what do you think, Shane? This is uh, it's Mahomes. So if you put these players in a trade, I guarantee you, you'd be like, "Damn, I just traded Brees Hall." Uh, I don't know, DK Metcalf and a first for Patrick Mahomes and a filler player. Now, you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, in a super flex, I'm okay. I'm good with it. It's start 11, which is a little. Uh, I mm-hmm. should have gotten we'll, more, we'll back, keep, obviously, but I, yeah, keep going. We'll keep it, going. Is this here. a mistake if you do this trade and you get back Deshaun Watson instead of Patrick Mahomes? Yeah. I mean, so by process, this is a bad trade. And he got lucky that Mahomes fell on him at 108. And I got to be honest with you, Herbert at 108, I'd much rather have a Watson at Herbert than at 108. Yeah. But I, I, I don't know. I don't know if Herbert's because it's Mahomes. Back. You can ju- you could probably justify. Okay, I violated the two rules, Mahomes. but it's Mahomes. If it's Burrow, Herbert, Lawrence, now I'm like, eh, I wish I would have done something different. Anyway, continue. I know there's yeah. three parts. Okay, and there's this part here. Um, so rookie picks undervalued. So we'll keep that in mind as well. Uh, the second part is took Higgins in the third. So again, he went in the first, it went Mahomes, Herbert, and then Higgins in the third. Who do you take in the second? No, and he traded it. Oh, he traded that away. Higgins in the third ended up with the rookie 105, Hollywood Ridley, Rashad White, Herbert, Brian Robinson, Deontay, RB Darts, hunted tight end. Later in the rookie draft, traded the 105 for Pollard and the 112. Then pivoted off the 112 for a future 24 um, first. And then there's some other stuff that he did. Sorry, there's a lot of uh, a lot of pieces here, Chris. Um, but what do you think about that trade right there? Trade the 105 for Pollard and the 112, and then turn that 112 into the 24 first. I mean, you know what? 
I like getting that back. That essentially nullifies that first rounder that he traded away because yep. he essentially turned Paul Gibbs into Pollard and then turned it into Gibbs for Pollard in a first, assuming Gibbs is around the 105. So when you put it in that context, he essentially traded Gibbs for Pollard in a 24 first. Like we would do mm -hmm. that all day too. Yeah. In, in this league, generally where it's rookie picks undervalued, get you some rookie picks then. <laughs> I mean, yeah. find, find ways to do it. And it's, it's a start 11. So be careful. Don't throw too much stuff together to get rookie picks, but well, uh, Shane, you take away that 24 first in that first trade and it's a second and a fourth for Mahomes in an 11th. You do that deal all day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was the extra first. So, he, but but again, he got. I, I don't want to say he got lucky, or maybe he knew the room. You know what? Maybe he just worked the room. He knew what to do, and he was like, "I bet you, I can get this first back." Because he did say the first. He's active. He's he active. Said future, yeah, future firsts are devalued. So he said, "I bet you, I could get this. I could bet you, I can make that rookie pick back." And how many? Like, I can get a rookie pick back. Can I get a Patrick Mahomes? How often can I get a Patrick Mahomes? And the answer is usually once in the startup. Brian asks roster cuts. Hey dudes, haven't heard you talk about roster cuts very much. How does it affect construction and strategy? 12 team super flex start 10 half PPR tight end premium four man taxi cuts before the draft to 14 total, not including the taxi. So 14 total, not including the taxi. I mean, it's pretty shallow. You only have what four roster spots to play with outside of the taxi squad. So you're going to have to be super tight with pro probably you're going to have to be super tight with what you have in your starting lineup already. You know what I mean? Like you want to be as efficient as possible because I don't know if you can afford to carry maybe one receiver on your bench, maybe. And now you don't probably have insurance at quarterback or tight end. I wouldn't even bother with a backup tight end because I'm sure there's 15 you can stream on waivers. Uh, quarterbacks, I can't imagine there's many QB threes that are on teams because you know you can only carry probably three max. I don't know. This is this is challenging. I'd almost feel like you have to cater it to how good your starting lineup is at each spot, right? If your running backs suck, you almost have to carry like the best handcuff running backs on your bench. I would think. So this is this is for sure 14 total not including taxi. It's not 14 bench spots not including taxi, right? If because it's 14 total, so that that's including the 10 starters. That that seems I'm, I'm ridiculous. I'm guessing it's probably 14 bench spots. It's got to be 14 bench spots, yeah. yeah. And four four taxi. Yeah. Okay. If if you're playing in a start 10 <laughs> 14 man roster league, <laughs> you're doing the opposite of like, you know, the you might as well just stream the, the bench because you can always fill a need off of the bench with replacement level players off waivers because waivers, yeah, I mean, there's going to the be starters gonna be, on waivers. I was going to say the waivers are so good that I don't even give a shit about any of my backup players. Like mm -hmm. I'm literally putting no assets into that, no no capital. In, it, it in that case, what would you use your backup players on though? Would it like, like if you only have four? Would it just purely depend on if like your QB sucked, you'd carry a third. If your tight end sucked, you'd carry a second. I mean, how would you do it? Yeah. I mean, and there, I, I have no wide receivers, absolutely no other wide receivers, but they, doesn't it feel like the, you'd be able to rot like Alexander Madison would be on waivers. Like he'd be the guy mm -hmm. you'd pick up because if he's starting, yeah. he goes right into the top 12, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, let's go to uh, another super chat here. Knock this one out. Thank you, Robert. Uh, it's $10 to brag. Superflex 10 team, start 10, tight end premium. QBs are T-Law and Watson and Jimmy G. Running backs, Bijan, Walker, Aaron Jones, Madison. Wide receivers, Chase, Waddle, Amon Ra, Alave, Ridley, D-Hop, Tony. Tight end, Hawk, and Kittle. New startup, Superflex, 12 team, start 10, tight end premium, 1.5. Traded the 109, 24 first, the 404 for the 103 and 503. So far went Hertz at 103 and Dak at 204, Devonta at 309. So what do you think about that trade? Traded the 109, a 24 first, and the 404. For the 103 and 503. Again, breaking our quote unquote golden rules, trading 24 first away and only getting two pieces back when you gave three pieces. 
stop doing it. Just stop doing it. I mean, what hurts is you probably <laughs> traded away like Justin Fields or Lamar Jackson or Deshaun Watson just to get Jalen Hurts, you know, and I, I some people may do that. I 109 is a spot where I'm like, okay, I'd rather have the 103 or the 101, but I'm not gonna I'm not moving up from the 109 with a first. It feels like you're just taking a major risk there. And you know, well, what if Justin Fields is as good as Jalen Hurts? Like it's in the rate. You're not you're not moving from this if that's a second rounder, it's basically what the person asked two questions ago. You right. know, mm-hmm. second and a fourth moving up, okay, fine. But here, yeah, it went a little too far, I think. So went Devante at the 309. So Hertz at 103, Dak at 204, Devante at 309, have the 503 and 504 coming up soon. Players available that he's considering, ETN, Walker, Jacobs, Eckler, Chubb, Pollard, Ramondre, Najee, Pittman, Burks. And then you got some rookies, QJ, Addison, Debo. What do you think out of uh, out of those? I mean, Shane, what do you do? He's already traded away his 24 first. He's got Hertz, Dak, and Devontae Smith. And his only extra asset is essentially this fifth rounder that he gave up his fourth to get. But he already spent his 24 first. Like, how, where do you build from here? Doesn't it feel like you almost have to kind of go points? You've, you've committed to winning. Um, you go points or you go... Or I, I also want to get another... I also want to get another QB because I don't have my 24 first. No, see, but I've already spent too much. I've I've already put too many too many uh, assets into that two positions. I, I'm probably if I'm probably ETN, going Eckler right there. <laughs> oh, I can't even do that to myself. I would probably end up going ETN here and convince myself that they're going to throw him the ball, knowing that that's not going to be what actually happens. I don't. You know, like what's it. funny is I could go Najee, Ramondre, Chubb, or Jacobs. So the fact that we all kind of went a different running back, it's like means you need to trade means you need to trade out of, out of one of these oh, spots. Or you know what you do? You just take two running backs and you just bet that you get Josh Jacobs and Austin Eckler top five again. And mm-hmm. if that happens, you probably win, right? Jalen hurts. No. Plus those guys. I mean, you probably have a good chance to win, but if you don't hit, now you're the team that's like, man, I'm going to miss the playoffs. I have running backs and I don't have my 24 first. It's risky. I'm, I'm taking one of those two picks, 503 or 504, and I'm moving back and getting a 24 first back somehow. That's the, I'm so a, that I screwed up giving up my first. I screwed up giving my first. Can I get somebody to get leverage me one back? Just to get it back because then like you have control over your startup again and it's still early enough in it. You know, you, you, you got back to, got back to equilibrium, getting your first back. So now it's like, all right, I like that. Now now I know how to build from here. Okay. So let's go to Fabian's here. Thank you for your super chat. It is a two QB 10 team sell KW three for the one Oh six and two ten. Other running backs. I'm sorry. Hold on. You're getting, Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. And the two ten for, yeah. See you. Bye. Like, dude, go ahead. Accept. Like, I don't care about your other running backs. I don't, I don't care if I'm your other running back. Just go hit that. Go hit accept. Accept now. Okay. Sorry. Oh, you're good. <laughs> don't mind me. Uh, 2QB 10 team sell KW3 for the 106 210. My running backs are Javante Williams, Akers, Elijah Mitchell, McKinnon. Have a strong roster, but definitely not beating the top two teams yet, in my opinion. Could get Gibbs, JSN, or CJ. I mean, in a two QB, if you're getting CJ Stroud, that's easily over Kenneth Walker. Gibbs over Kenneth yeah. Walker. That you're getting a free second to pivot from Kenneth Walker to JSN, who's already a top twelve receiver. Yeah, I mean, you're a, like Shane said, you're he saw the one oh six for Kenneth Walker, just gone. I don't even care who the player is. Yeah, gone. Yeah. Yeah. And you have the flexibility of the one oh six. You got that two ten to do some stuff with, you know. Yeah. Yep. Okay, Fabian. Thank you for that super. Let's keep rolling here, guys. Let me add in. I, I do want to hit another startup question, though. You know, here's here's one that we had in the hopper from the community posts. 10 team 2 QB PPR 1.5 tight end premium. It's a 0.1 point per carry. So every running back or quarterback or wide receiver carry, you get 0.1. Start 10. QBs, T Law, Watson, Stafford. Running backs, Kendra Miller and Trash. 
Wide receivers, Alave, London, Dotson, Ayuk. Tight ends, Pitts, and Joku. Acquired 824 first. Shane, Scott, what would you do? So real quick, if it's 0.1 PPC, I need 10 carries for a point, right? So that means to Nailed get two it. points out of them, there's going to be one, two, three running backs that probably can average. It, it two means very a little. Let's just yeah, put it that it way. Yeah. So just just remember that. Like, there's not going to be many running backs where you're like, oh, thank God for those extra points. It's more going to be like, hey, I got an extra one point, one point. Um, anywho, uh, T. Law, Watson, Stafford, Robert, Trash, all the contender, isn't it, Shane? Eight twenty four firsts. I mean, eight twenty four firsts. Why aren't I upgrading Dotson and Ayuk in London? Or why aren't I just trading for like four starters, hedging yeah, my bets on keeping some picks and still trying to contend? Because I have T. Law and Deshaun Watson. I have eight twenty four firsts. Here's three firsts for Justin <laughs> Jefferson or Jamar Chase. Here, give me. Give me. <laughs> okay. Good. I mean, it's not it's not overly complicated. That's what you do when you have a lot of assets like this and and a pretty good roster. Go make that shit better. Um, you don't have to trade all eight of your picks, but you have eight of your picks. You can be the gorilla in the room and throw them around a little bit. Indeed. So I'm gonna just put this up here. Michael uh Neitz. I'm sorry that uh, we don't have the context behind this, but you gave us a super chat earlier, two bucks. You'd think I'd learn by now, but it's a start 11. So just in, in case anybody's wondering what a start 11 is, we always count up every every position, every roster spot you have that you start each week, not including kicker and defense. So start 11 oftentimes is a quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, a tight end, four flexes, and a super flex. I believe that math is correct. Okay. Thank you for that super chat. We have another one here from Eli Smith, Waller or Chig and Bateman. 1.75 tight end premium start 11. It's start 11. Just... Well, start 11, I take the package. Yeah, give me Chig and Bateman because Waller might be washed. It's closer than you think. I think if you can get a good season out of Waller from a warp perspective, you're winning the deal with the Waller side. Um, I'm still confident that I don't know where all the Hive fans of Chiggy Aconquo exist. They <laughs> must only exist on Twitter and other podcasts. Certainly not in the leagues. I have Chiggy Aconquo because anytime I try to trade him, oh man, I, I'm good. And especially when they say I've listened to your analysis on him. Why would I trade for him? I've hey, uh, a couple times. I will give you in any league we are together. I will give you Darren Waller for Chiggy Aconquo. And what was the second piece of that deal? Shot Shot Bateman, Bateman, who you hate. Not like him either. I don't care. I don't like him at all. And I don't even particularly care for Chig, but I will give you Waller for that. So I want that a second rounder for Chig. You willing to Wait, pay that? No, that's not, that's that's lunacy. <laughs> Jordan, thank you for the super chat. 10 team PPR super flag super flex or super flex. That's this is the deep end. I listen mm -hmm. to a podcast and they and they call it the deep end when you start getting, you know, to the end of a end of a stream or something. This is the deep end. 10 team PPR Superflex, 1.5 tight end premium, start 10. Hertz, Mac, Ritter, Swift, Pacheco, Devontae, Drake, uh, Garrett Wilson, Pickens, Pitts, Andrews, 102, 104, 202, 204, a couple thirds. Traded Fields for Mac, the 102, and a late 24 first. Thoughts? Well, it's a 10 team he, super flex start 10. I guess he's going to Anthony Richardson there and then he's got a 24 first. I mean, that's a smash. You can argue um, yeah. one for one that Anthony Richardson is equal to Justin Fields almost. So the fact that he got an extra first on top of it. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, a nice team here. Yeah. Yeah. Bob Mac Jones. Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't even count. He's oh, not yeah. a real quarterback, according to yeah. Shane. He's not even in a, a ten person. teams in a ten team super flex. He's not that big of a deal. He might as well be Little that. Mac from uh, Mike Tyson's Punch Out. <laughs> Mike Diaz, thank you for the super chat. What do you do when you've amassed so much capital and value? Acquire what has now become a juggernaut, hammers at every position, and now a third of the league is openly demanding competitive balance. Look, I'm, I, I need this put out there. I'm a liberal, right? I am very much of a mind that, that a lot of things in community should be shared, right? Um, but Dynasty Football is a free market capitalist society. Fuck your competitive balance. I earn this shit. 
You know what I mean? If they want a competitive league, get better. And if they don't like it, then fold the league and I'll go join another league. Um, but what was your original question? Besides, what does he do? So much value. What is what does he what does he do? Hammers I mean, at every position. It's getting boring, Shane. He's got this passive residual income coming in here. He can he can Everybody's yeah, I mean pissed off. Co managed with Shane in the new listener league. Shane needs move, an auction helper. Yeah, I need auction help. Um move move I'd move the picks and explain to your league, who's apparently very not intelligent, um, that how rookie picks are uh good assets for them to accrue, um, because their teams are bad. Um, and it's like the, the feeder system, like how Tampa Bay always trades good players to the other teams in the uh, major leagues once they can't afford them anymore. Explain your league mates that that's what you are right now, except that you don't have to trade the good players when they get good later. You can just hold on to them. So I will take your current good players, beat your brains in for a couple more years. But if you <laughs> keep doing this, you too will someday be as good as me. And have I them the email more... have them email dynasty trades in five at gmail.com for a uh, for a roster review as well if you want to tighten up the competitive balance a little bit. Scott. I mean, I think you just go you go to the really bad teams that are already poor and lacking resources and you just say, you know, are you going to trade your uh you know your soul to me to where yes, I'll give you a little bit of food or water today, but down the road, like you're gonna be in trouble. You go to those teams and you say, Hey, can I get your future picks? Even two years out, you just you continue to hammer until the league folds. And you know how good of a feeling it's only happened to me one time in a decade. But the league, everyone just quits because of the team you've built. Yeah. Four people quit. The commissioner goes, Yeah, this league's gonna be too hard to fill, blah, blah, blah. We're just gonna fold the league. Like that is the ultimate. That's that's time. an alpha. Yeah. It sucks, but like that feels like the way that you go out with this team is you just continue to beat everybody until everyone leaves. Nothing beat, wrong beat with them that. to death. Beat them to death. Corey, thank you for the super chat. 10 team start 11, super flex, 28 man roster startup. If no teams are willing to deal 24 picks on trade back, is it still worth trading back from the fourth or fifth round for extra startup picks? Okay, that that's a good question. So nobody's going to give him a, a 24 pick for trading back, but should he still trade back from the fourth or fifth and maybe cluster picks in the in the seventh, eighth, ninth? What are your thoughts, guys? I mean, can you essentially just get the picks now in the trade and then turn around and trade other picks for 24 first and it accomplishes the same thing? Like it sounds like he's trying to do the I trade my fourth for an eighth and a first and no one's biting. Mm-hmm. But if you can trade a fourth for a seventh and a ninth, and then somehow you trade your sixth for a 24 first, didn't you accomplish the same exact thing pretty much? Just not in a direct way. I mean, that's what I would try to do. Other than that, I mean, you, you got to find creative ways to extract those future firsts without being obvious as to what you're trying to do. Some people, when they get that offer, hey, I got to move up three, three rounds, but I have to give up my 24 first. No, I'm good. Try to get it a different way. Yeah, so so just looking at this board, fourth and fifth round. So from this startup, Diggs was at four oh seven. I'm just going in kind of the middle of the of the rounds. Diggs was at four oh seven. Christian Watson was at five oh six. Well, this so, is a ten team too. So this is even less players. It is. It is. Yeah. So I, I guess just pick out your pick out your flat tiers if you want to trade back, get in those spots. But I like Scott's idea of maybe just selling your your six for a twenty. I mean, uh, well, let me ask you this, Clay. In a twelve teamer, where do you think a, a startup pick is worth a future first? Like round five, six, seven range, yeah. something like that. Yeah, five, six, seven. Because in the seventh round here, we're looking at. Yeah, you're in like the Marquise Brown, like Zay Flowers. I, I think it's it's sixth round. So if you can move a fourth for a sixth and an eighth here, adjust that to a 12 team, it's it's kind of the same thing, right? You're getting two picks yeah. that are worth first round-ish value for one right. player or for one pick. And then you you could flip one of those for a first straight up and you're still getting the leverage. You're just doing yeah, we, it in two separate deals. We always, I mean, I don't, I, we, I talk like we're combined like the Borg or something, um, but if people are offering me firsts for like seventh, eighth rounders, I'm like, fucking add it. Here you go. That's all yours. Like, thanks. I probably didn't need that pick anyway. 
you know, I don't want to do that for like four straight rounds, like the fifth through the ninth. Eh, maybe I would. Maybe I would. Try me. Well, Let's it's see. like Shane, I'll give you my fourth for your seventh and a first and you decline it. But then I'll give you my fourth for your sixth and eighth. And then in the sixth, I turn around and trade you my sixth for a first. <laughs> you essentially did the same thing. Yeah, yeah. You just yeah. waited two rounds and now you're willing to trade your first. Yeah. So it, just, just try that. Uh, Rye and 25. Thank you for the super chat. One QB, 12 team, start eight PPR. Have Anthony Richardson, Jameer Gibbs, Bijan Walker, Spears, Kendra Miller, Waddle, Judy Dotson, OBJ, Curtis Samuel. Uh, a couple other grossies. Addison, I guess we could mention him. JMO, just because some people like him. 224 first and 225 first. Should I consider trading Bijan for some hammer wide receivers slash picks and use some of my picks to get cheaper running backs like Jones, Dalvin Cook, Mixon, Henry, et cetera? I think I need more hammer wide receivers in this format. You just need hammers in this in this format. Only if nobody will allow him to upgrade at receiver. He's got a bunch of mm -hmm flat tier receivers in a shallow league, which is not going to be a fun experience week to week. But like, yeah, would I trade Gibbs for Jamar Chase or Jefferson? And then if I could then buy Joe Mixon or Derek Henry using JMO or Marvin Mims or Kadarius Tony, then I would, I would do that. But first I would say, can I add a first to Jamison Williams and get a better receiver? You know, like I would go at it both ways. Just depends on what his market was willing to do. I will give you Jerry Judy. Uh, Jahan Dotson and a first. Will you please give me a, a good receiver? If I'm trading Bijan, uh, yeah, I'll trade Bijan. Uh, I will take uh, Jamar Chase. I will it's one Justin. for one, right? I will take Justin Jefferson, and then yeah. we will stop talking after that when you try to make me another offer. Unless it's like you know, my dude in a first. Yeah, yeah, you have to you have to make it hurt. And and in a start eight, if people are like, okay, yeah, yeah, I'll give you all this stuff. Like, I get just always remember it's a start eight, well, one QB. Right. Like, I don't want your kidney, right? Kidneys, you can survive with one. I need I'm an organ your heart. that you can't survive. Well, I want you to, I don't want you to die because that's just mean. But I want you to. Then you got an orphan to fill, and that sucks. Right. Right. And that's terrible. But I will take like a kidney and a half. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'll leave you with like a half functioning kidney. So, like, I don't know. Because nobody like, gives up one and a half kidneys. Right. You can only give away one kidney. Oh, well, but That's if you right. can, if they only have one kidney left and you can limit the function of the one remaining, then maybe they'll miss some lineups and you'll be able to beat them that way. I can just punch them in their sides repeatedly after I take their kidney. I like it. So there's going to be more coming about this, but on June 17th, mark your calendars, June 17th from 7 p.m. to midnight Eastern, we are doing our Dynasty Trades in five hour super stream which is going to be awesome. Shane did something awesome today, crushed it, knocked it out of the park. He texts or DMs Scott Fish, and he hooked it up with two Scott Fishbowl entries that we're going to give away on the 17th. I apologize. I sent out a tweet earlier saying we were going to give out Scott Fishbowl uh, seats tonight. That did not happen. Shade was like, dude, we're giving out on um, 617. It's like, okay. So anyway, join us on that. And I will use, I, I think we should use one of them in a different fashion for the people who can't join us for our live streams. So anyway. No, no. No, I'm I, I, every year I've given away Scott Fishbowl uh, invites and I've done it on the basis of uh, what charitable contributions people have given. And okay. this year I am going to be completely and utterly um, greedy like everyone else that gives them away. And you will need to watch our live stream, be in our live stream to be eligible to win. OK, fair enough. He, he got the he got the seats. He got the seats. And, and he probably just needs a cigarette right now. So he's trying to just like end this thing. So, so he's like, he's a little aggressive, you know, he's a little aggressive right now. Yeah. Um, no, but thank you all so much for joining on a Tuesday. Still have 312 people in here who all hit the like Scott, would you like to say anything, sir? No, this was a good stream. Uh, we got a variety of questions. Uh, someone said at the very yeah. beginning, like this is the perfect timing for startups. I prefer doing startups yeah. earlier in the year before free agency and stuff. But if you're going to do them, the time to add leagues is now because you're going to get bored. You're going to be going, I want to add a couple new teams that might be built differently than the ones I already have. So I love the startup discussion. It's uh, 
like the thing to talk about now, aside from just stuff that's happening every day in the NFL, which either means something or doesn't mean much. So good show tonight, guys. Justin Ross, wide receiver one. No, thank you for everyone joining us. Can't wait to our live stream on 617. Are you looking forward to five hours of stuff? Yeah, yeah. And and if you want to put in the comments, um, uh, like, we have a, we have a few ideas for guests, but if you want to put in the comments like segments that you think would be cool, we are going to have it structured. But um, again, more information coming on that. We love you guys. We appreciate you. We will see you next time. Be on the lookout for a uh, for a show on Thursday. Is my guess. See you later. Appreciate everyone. Thank you.